Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how the particle callback cinematic was built. If you still haven't seen that video, you can find the link to it below in the video description. The first thing we need to do is analyze what that project was doing in order to replicate it. To save some time, I've already done that, and you can see the breakdown here in the upper right. Let's get started. To create a sequence, we go to the flux window and click the plus button. That creates a sequence with a default name, in this case, sequence 000. At the moment, this sequence is empty, and you can start populating it by dragging game objects from the hierarchy into the flux window. When we look at the breakdown of the events, we can see that the biggest ends at frame 930. Let's change the size of the sequence to match that event. To change it, simply go to the upper right corner and set it to 930. Now let's start by dragging the cam intro object into the sequence. This creates a timeline. Now we want to add an event that enables the camera from frame 0 to frame 930. To do that, we click the plus button in the timeline header and we choose the game object set active event. This creates two things, a track and an event inside that track. One thing to notice is that when things are selected inside the flux window, it shows them in the flux inspector not in Unity's inspector. The reason for this is that a lot of times you need to access properties in other objects and since having multiple inspectors is quite cumbersome workflow, we decided to create our own inspector. The camera is now set, so now let's handle the background. First we select the background object and drag it into the sequence. We have to animate two things in the background's material. The first is shininess, which is a float exploding material. To do so, we click the plus button and add render twin float. Set the range from 45 to 200 and make sure that we're animating shininess property from 1 to 0. The second thing we want to animate is color. Since it's a different kind of event, you need to add a new track, render twin color. Now, we copy the color value, making sure that we want to go from opaque to transparent. We leave the property as color, since that's the one we want to animate. Let's see how it looks. As you can see, there's something weird happening when we get to the fade of color. The shininess is disappearing. This has to do with the way Unity handles material block properties at the moment. And in order to preserve the shininess value, we need to set it here too. To do that, we simply go to the point where we want to add a new event, select the track we want to add the event to, and then press K. This sets a new event on the track at the point where the scrub line is. Now we simply set the values, and you can now see it work fine. Next, we have both the sprites. We want to fade in and out the Unity logo and the particle callbacks. Let's drag them both into the sequence. Now we add a color twin event to them and set them up. When we select both tracks and hit K, this will add another event for both of them. Let's set up those two. As you can see, now the sprites are animated.
With the particle effects, let's take a slightly different approach. We start by creating a timeline for the dust particle and then add a color twin event. However, if you scrub at the moment, you can't see the particles running. That's because we don't have any events telling Flux that the particle system should be playing. So let's add a play particle system event. Now scrubbing shows the particle system animating. The Bouquet Particle System is basically a copy of this one, so let's right-click on it and select Duplicate Timeline. Now we want to assign this timeline to the Bouquet object. To do that, we select the Bouquet object in the hierarchy and then right-click on the Timeline header. The Bouquet Timeline is now associated with that object, as you can see when we scrub. Finally, we'll need to set up the Audio Fade-In. All the events so far act on their owners, however that's not necessary. In fact, you may want to create your own events that affect objects that aren't even attached to game objects. That's the case of the event that controls the volume of the audio listener. However, a timeline always has to have an owner. So what we'll do is simply add the sequence itself to the timeline and then set the global volume event on it. With this last step, our sequence is finished. For the sequence to play automatically, we have to toggle on the play on start, otherwise it will have to be triggered manually. Hope you enjoyed this demo.